In these videos, I'm going to be going through math, physics, and engineering practice problems. If you need help with any of your courses or you want access to extra practice problems, check out my website linked below. In this video, we're going to take a look at what happens when we add an applied force to our mass, spring, and damper system. So let's back up a little bit and start with just a mass on a spring. In one of our previous videos, we showed that you can take the square root of k over m to calculate the angular frequency, where k is the spring constant and m is the mass of the object. Now, if we add a damper to the system, we need to modify our equation for the angular frequency. Our damped angular frequency is going to be the square root of our undamped angular frequency squared minus our damping constant squared, where the damping constant is equal to b over 2m. Now, if we combine those equations together, we'll get that our damped angular frequency is going to be the square root of k over m minus b squared over 4m squared. So we can use that to calculate our angular frequency when we have a mass, spring, and a damper. When we add a damper to the mix, the amplitude of our oscillations is going to decay very quickly. So it's not like the case with just the spring and the mass, where once you set this thing into motion, it's going to keep oscillating back and forth forever. Once you add a damper in, things will come back to the equilibrium position fairly quickly. If we want to maintain oscillations when we have a damper, we need to have an applied force. So what that applied force is going to look like is they usually call this a sinusoidally applied force, just meaning that the force is not constant, but the force itself is going to be changing as a function of time as well. So we have that our applied force is going to be equal to the amplitude of that applied force, times sine omega naught, so that's going to be the angular frequency of the applied force, times time, plus the phase shift naught, or the phase shift of that applied force. Now what's important to take a look at here is the angular frequency of our applied force. How does that compare to the damped angular frequency of our system? What you'll notice is that if the angular frequency of the applied force matches the damped angular frequency of our system, then the amplitude of the oscillations is going to be very high. The way I like to think about this is that if someone's on a swing set and you're pushing them on a swing set, it's not so important how hard you push them, but the frequency at which you push them. If you push them on the swing just as they're coming down, that's what's going to make the amplitude of the oscillations a lot bigger than if you push them hard but at the wrong time. So what we can say is that if the damped angular frequency is equal to the angular frequency of our force, then the amplitude of our oscillations is going to be maximized. Now let's take a look at a practice problem. Given the following parameters for a mass, spring, and damper system, determine the driving frequency for an externally applied sinusoidally oscillating force that would maximize the amplitude of the oscillations. Then they give us the value for the mass, the value for our spring constant, and then the value for B, which is related to our damper, and it's, that's going to be 6.6 .6 newton seconds per meter. Now we know that to maximize the amplitude, the driving frequency should match the natural frequency of the system. So we can use the equation that we had before for the damped angular frequency and use that to calculate the natural frequency of our system. So we have the square root of k over m minus b squared over 4 times m squared. So that's going to be the square root of 199 over 1.42 minus 6.6 .6 squared over 4 times 1.42 squared. And that tells us that our natural frequency is going to be 11.608 radians per second. So what that tells us is that every second, our system completes roughly 11.6 radians. We know that for a full circle, that's going to be 2 pi, or roughly 6. And so we're almost at two full circles here every second. Now what they want is they want the frequency here and not the angular frequency. So we've got to convert these radians per second into hertz. So the way we can do that is you can take our angular frequency and divide by 2 pi, and that'll give us our answer in hertz. So if we do that, we'll get that our frequency is equal to 1.85 hertz. That's going to be the natural frequency of the system. Now if we want the driving frequency that's going to maximize the amplitude of the oscillations, we just need to set our driving frequency equal to the natural frequency. So that means our driving frequency is going to be the same, 1.85 hertz. That's it for this one. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments below and I'll answer those as soon as I can.